Hello and welcome to Dateline Northeast, a program that gives you an overview of the developments in India's Northeast region. I'm your host Valerie Patton and the highlights of today's program are Tripura gets the second passenger bus to Kolkata via Dhaka. Kohima hosts the first Naga Day with Grandeur Mania. Kamjong district upholds rich traditions of Thangkul community. And Assam celebrates Bogali Bihu with gaiety and fervor. Tripura gets the second passenger bus to Kolkata via Dhaka to boost the transborder relationship between India and Bangladesh. We have a report. In an initiative to strengthen the relationship between India and Bangladesh, the second bus service from Agartala to Kolkata via Dhaka was launched, named Moitri 2. The buses, red in colour, were flagged off by the chairman of the Tripura Road Transport Corporation, Rajendra Riang, and MLA Ratan Das in Agartala recently. Passengers in the bus were very excited to be part of the first Volvo service from the state. It's very beneficial to us because we have much more secured services. So, yeah, it's, it's really good. And uh, regarding the relation we create with the Bangladeshi people, it's like uh, while traveling, I meet a lot of Bangladeshi people and while traveling, I get bonded to them, I talk to them and since I'm staying there, it's very beneficial to me because uh, if there is any problem, I can just contact them. The bus service, which is one of the growing multimodal connectivity, is hoped to improve the relationship between India and Bangladesh through people-to-people -people connectivity. Tripura shares a solid relationship with Bangladesh and West Bengal because of the density of the Bengali populations. Bharat Bangladesh, Tripura Bangladesh, Tripura Bangladesh, Paschim Bangla, AJ Jugo Shutro, Shadhinata Purbo, Shadhinuttar, Akhondo Bharat, Khondito Bharat, Shimana, Gharbari, Chere Nuton Jagai Boshoti, Abar Firejava, a nostalgic effect, Purun Shamburge, Shaptai Jada Mother Monke Alon de Boriadai, A Bas Dubochore Dukhani, TRTC Nijet Takai, Amibolbo, Oshadharon Jodi Naoval Tebari, Bolbo Ashaprodo, Birat. The bus service from between the nations will be fruitful for the locals as it will be time-saving and economical as the bus is scheduled to ply twice a week with a fare of Rs 2,200 and will take some 20 hours for reaching the destination. The distance between Kolkata and Agatala is 1,650 kilometers if one skirts Bangladesh, but the distance falls to 515 kilometers if the buses go through Dhaka. हमारे ये इंडो बांग्ला जो अब शुरू किया है सेकंड बास ये हमारा इंडो बांग्ला के लिए बहुत टीआरटीसी का बहुत अच्छा होगा और मैं आशा करता हूँ कि ये इंडो बांग्ला हमारा जो रिलेशन ये और भी ज़्यादा अच्छा हो जाएगा Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his Bangladeshi counterpart Sheikh Hasina jointly flagged off the Dhaka, Shillong, Guwahati and Kolkata Dhaka Agatala bus services during Modi's visit to Bangladesh around three years back. Due to the non-availability of air tickets for other reasons, the buses have become popular mode of transportation between West Bengal and Tripura via Bangladesh capital. The first Moitri bus service was launched in the year 2015. The Kolkata Dhaka bus link began in June 1999 and the separate Agartala Dhaka service started in September 2003. 
Nagas residing across India converged at Kochese, Kohima's local ground, and marked the first Naga Day celebration for reconciliation and redefining the unity and togetherness. Organized by the Forum for Nagas Reconciliation under the theme Nagas Without Borders. The historic day witnessed the Naga community from all walks of life sharing a single platform with their colorful traditional attires. With an aim to bring forward a brotherhood and togetherness to a greater height, the first of its kind, the Naga Day was observed in Nagaland's Kohima city. The event marked the celebration of oneness and reconnected the Nagas from all over the country by acknowledging their unique history and culture ethos. Organized by the Forum for Nagas Reconciliation under the theme Nagas Without Borders, the gathering aimed to examine themselves as one community and shared future with responsibility, accountability and a sense of belonging with each other. Today is a great day. You can see thousands of people are already in. This is uh, something that the Forum for Naga Reconciliation have taught. An idea came to us several months ago and now it has become a reality. The, the rationale behind the Naga Day is to bring all the Naga people. It is not a political gathering. It is along the line of the social, cultural solidarity of the Naga people together. While the event witnessed various celebrated speakers sharing their knowledge and thoughts with special focus on belongingness and oneness in good spirit, the event was also seen as a way of promoting their richly blessed traditions and diverse culture. A day such as this is an acknowledgement of our own homecoming, where we believe that we deserve to begin to look at ourselves a little differently, where we look at each other as brothers, whether you are from the north, south, east, west, it doesn't matter. But the fact remains that the Nagas must begin to live together because if we want bigger things, all of us must put our heads together. Tribal warriors from Gonyak tribe opened the historic event by beating off gong, firing guns, and follow suit by the Naga choir. The performance of the Featherhead showcased the exotic heritage of the Dankul community, whereas the Naglan Chamber Choir and various other homegrown artists presented songs on the occasion. The event urged the people to create positive history for the time to come. I would like to propose that this acknowledgement and celebration of what our history has given us should take us in the direction, in the creative direction I believe God is showing us. And that is reconciliation within our society through the healing of our wounded relationships which will enable us to grow properly with mutual goodwill and cooperation lifting us up instead of the opposite bringing us down. Thousands of Nagas from all works of life gathered under single accord and affirmed themselves as every Naga has a role to contribute in the process of nation building. Such event creates a platform and instills a positive vibes to the people, especially the younger generation, and strive for better men in life. Sports remain an essential part of the lifestyle of residents of Northeast India, with more and more youngsters excelling in various sports. The latest joining of the Hall of Fame from the region is a 32-year-old former woman football player from Manipur, Techcham Ranjida Devi, who has been awarded with the FIFA referee badge. With this, she became the second woman international referee from the state. Take a look. India's Northeast region's love for soccer is very much visible as the game continues to reign in the hearts of the people. Over the years, the region has undoubtedly produced a number of football star players of the country, both at national and international levels. Joining the latest into the hallway of fame is 32-year-old Techcham Ranjita Devi, who hails from Khongjom Bazar in Thobal district of Manipur. The youngest among the five siblings, Ranjita started her career in the year 1999 as a football player playing for the local clubs. 
Later, the former woman football player enrolled as state class 3 referee in 2007 and had passed national grade in 2016. And since then, there has been no turning back for her. She continues to outshine in sports by becoming the only second woman referee of Manipur to be awarded the FIFA referee badge after CH Kalyani Chanu. Ranjita's name was approved by the FIFA Referees Committee for FIFA World Cup 2018, making her the only woman referee from India to represent in FIFA 2018. <laughs> Ranjita's humble background did not deter her dreams. With her strong determination and perseverance, the prestigious FIFA badge has now opened a gateway to international level. Currently serving as a woman constable in the 9th India Reserve Battalion, Ranjita has so far officiated in 51 national level tournaments and various state and inter-university matches. Also, she has officiated in four international matches, including three as assistant referee and one as referee. However, Ranjita got her first breakthrough as the centre referee in the national games held at Kerala and at the South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation Games. Masih problem di mana pun ada yang tu eh, hari dia practice tak kira na tu uraga. Infal hari kerja tu practice tu kerja tu bunyi. Ada yang soal ada lambi tinggi, kalau yang tau pun lagi halak pasuai miam jauh eh. Ado masih aina matung dah hurai bersing aina hari jening badi. Matam pangbum matam dah ngakak tengok raju. Ay ishagi oi na itu om dah. Kau na bro ya apa timing pangaga di, mampam pangaga di. Kau na view. Ado lagi. Her achievement will also inspire other youngsters, especially girls, to come out from their cocoon and explore their potential in sports. Let us now take a look at some of the events that have made news in the Northeast recently. Manipur Chief Minister N. Biren Singh received a warm welcome from the people of Tame Subdivisional Headquarters in Tamanglong District, where he visited recently. The CM laid the foundation stone of several development projects that include construction of Tame Police Station and Administrative Block, Artail Memorial Women's Market, Employee Station at Tame, and another Employee Station at Impa Village in Tosim Subdivision. The Employee Stations will accommodate special teachers and medical practitioners and all the four constructions are to be carried out by Manipur Police Housing Corporation. Besides this, he also inaugurated the office building of SBI Tame branch before gracing a reception function organized in his honor at Tame Bazaar. Voting for the upcoming state elections could witness a record voter turnout in the Garo Hills as it is for the first time that the voter verifiable paper audit trail VVPAT machines are introduced for polls in Meghalaya. With the VVPAT in use during polling, a voter who has cast his ballot in an electronic voting machine will also see on the screen of the VVPAT machine a printed copy containing the serial number, name and symbol of the candidate he has voted for. This ballot slip will be visible for 7 seconds after which it will be cut and dropped in the printer's drop box to be stored. An awareness exercise namely hands-on demo was also carried out in the state to boost voters' confidence and clear the air of misconceptions which was there earlier about EVM machines. Manipur's Chief Minister N. Biren Singh recently opened the 25th Meet Come Silver Jubilee of Liang Mai Sports Association at Liangchi Village in the state's Kang Pokpi district. Different cultural troops, including a group of dancers of 14th Battalion Sikh Regiment, showcased various cultural programs at the opening function. Speaking at the occasion, the Chief Minister also announced the construction of a VIP gallery at the meets venue that will be completed for an estimated cost of Rs 50 lakh in a year. 
Along with this, the government would also consider the proposal for the construction of the mini sports complex in the village as desired by the people. Tripura's CM Manik Sarkar recently hoisted the Northeast India's first 100 feet high mast national flag in Agartala. He unveiled it in front of Ujjayanta Palace, the former royal palace of Tripura and now Northeast India's biggest museum. Along with the flag, the Chief Minister also unveiled the statue of Master Das Surja Sen and statue of Maharaja Radha Kishore Manikya in front of the royal palace. Besides this, he also inaugurated the five new galleries inside the Tripura State Museum that include introduction to Northeast India, role of Tripura in the 1971 Liberation War of Bangladesh, art and crafts of the Northeast India, lifestyle of Northeast India and digital gallery. Hundreds of lanterns lit up the night sky in Imphal, the capital city of Manipur, as it hosted its first lantern festival. Residents from across the city gathered at Farmbilok Children Amusement Park, releasing lanterns in the sky on a winter night. Apart from this, a music concert was also held, where popular singers of the state performed live on stage on a chilly night. The festival is based on an ancient Asian tradition wherein sky lanterns are released as a form of prayer for good luck and blessings. Northeast India is known for preserving its traditions and culture. In a move to promote the heritage of the Tangkul Naga community, the 33rd Shungri Ramhau Panit Nitre festival was celebrated in Manipur Shodi village recently. These people, dressed in beautiful red attires, are on the way to their maternal homes to celebrate the 33rd Shungri Ramhau Panit Nitre Festival, which also marks the customary preparation for the cultivation crops for a year. Married women from the Shungri village, also known as Sorte village, are invited by their families during this time. <laughs> The people in this area of Kamchong district of Manipur have been preserving their traditions and culture since ancient times. This year, village authorities of Shorde organized the event with all traditional paraphernalia and ingredients. The festival was held on the theme of Mission Matukalui, which translates into culture revival. <laughs> Pirambani Pirambaduna Asilam Sid Hinapomatanda Moigi Tatnaron Custom Tradition Culture Tatnabi Agui Jingi D Tribal Sing D Forest Kaloinana Hinapan Preserving one's culture and traditions is the way generations pass on the baton of festivals from one generation to the other. While most of the world is forgetting the ways to preserve it, the Shorter village has managed to preserve its traditions. Speaking in the event was Parliamentary Secretary to PHET and MLA of Pungyeo constituency, K. Lishio, who underlined the importance of preserving one's culture identity. He also appreciated the efforts of the villagers to preserve their traditions. The festival was celebrated with all indigenous cultural ingredients, such as menfolks were seen with traditional haircut, the patches were made from bamboo, and the whole was made from real rice straws. According to the customs, until the ritual of the Ramhau, or the first phase of Chum cultivation festival, is performed, the villagers are not allowed to do any manual work. Youth of the country, including the Northeast region, have excelled in various sports, both national and international level, to create platforms for both professionals and amateurs, and to showcase sporting skills. The eighth Hockey India Senior Men National Championship was conducted by Manipur Hockey under the aegis of Hockey India in Imphal. 
Manipur is known for producing ace players in various sports including hockey. Many players have represented the state at the national and international levels. To promote hockey and create platforms for players to perform, the 8 Hockey India Senior Men National Championship 2018 was held at the Kumang Lambak Astrodove Hockey Stadium in Kumang Lambak Sports Stadium in Imphal. Organized by the Manipur Hockey under the aegis of Hockey India, the inaugural function was attended by Deputy Chief Minister Y. Choi Kumar, state officials and representatives of the sports fraternity. The minister emphasized the need to develop an infrastructure for hockey to develop the game in the state. consider creating more infrastructure in the form of this estrotech ground. There is need to have this at least at each of the district headquarters, if not more. Because it is players who will be practicing on such a sort of who will be able to come up and reach the national and the international level. Altogether, 32 teams with 680 players, including officials from across the country, participate in the championship. Sports Authority of Kuchara team defeated Manipur hockey team by 3-2 during the opening match of the championship, while neighboring Assam hockey also lost to Dalenkana hockey by 3-8. The tournament was used to promote culture of energy, vigor and a lifestyle that is active. I just think athletes can work hard. We have many examples in our national program of, of men and women's athletes who've been successful on the national um, scene. So I think just hard work will always get you somewhere in the end. Hosting such championships in Manipur will develop and nurture sports. It creates a platform for both budding talents and professionals. Festivals are an essential part of Northeast India and each festival in the region is celebrated with similar gusto and enthusiasm. One such festival associated with the seasonal harvesting of the crop, the Magbihu festival was celebrated across the state with Merriman, a report. Bhogali or Mag Bihu, one of the most important community festivals of Assam, is celebrated during this time every year and observed with gaiety and reverence. Mag Bihu marks the completion of harvesting and heralds the coming of spring. Locals are immersed in the festive spirit. Fun and frolic accompanied with the purity and piousness forms a distinctive feature of the festival. The festival begins a night before Mark Bihu, which is called Uruka, also known as the Day of Grand Feasts. Villagers make bamboo huts called Bhela Ghor or Community Kitchen and lavish spreads of foods are prepared using sesame, molasses and coconut. It is a merry men time all across the region. People enjoy socializing while enjoying feasts. <laughs> और तेल में बनाता है उसको बार पिठा बोलता है और नालके उसका नारु तिल का लारु मुरी का लारु सब कुछ हम लोग यहाँ अपना हाथ से बनाया कहाँ हम लोग तो इस बिहु में कपड़ा नहीं जिंदे ये बिहु भोगली बिहु है ना खाने का सब मिलता है यहाँ और खाने का ऐसे से बनता है यहाँ The day of the mark bihu begins with the lighting of meji, a bonfire made of bamboo and straw. The day also marks beginning of Magh month of Hindu Almanac. Bihu prayers are a lot similar to Lodi, the harvest festival celebrated at the same time in northern India. People thank the fire god to mark the end of the harvest season and take back his blessing in the form of burnt woods and bamboo. Commemorating this Bihu festival, Bhogali Bihu festival, for the last time, seven to eight years. It is started, we have started this function in the year 2011. Since then, we have been continuously holding this function in order that the different people, different people living in Guwahati and also different races that, that are inhabiting this Assam, they are all being bonded into one family. That is our whole purpose. In fact, in Bhogali Bihu is the 
a game of the cultural, a game of the, the festival that represents the whole cultural unity of the state of Assam. People distribute sweet dishes like pithe, siradoi, and jol pan to spread cheer. There is a feeling of accomplishment amongst the farmers who put their heart and soul in order to get a good produce during this season. Bhogale bihu matlab bhog karna. Bhog karna matlab khana khana. Ye bihu khas karke khane ka hi bihu hota hai. Aur isme jaise ki ham log ki khet mein jo upaj hoti hai, jo chawal dhan jo hota hai, iske ham log sabko ek saath milke khate hain. और सबको हम लोग लेके चलते हैं कि सबका धन दर्जा भरे रहे कोठी भरी रहे और खेत हरा भरा रहे और इसी के साथ हम लोग सभी को शुभकामनाएं देते हैं हम लोग बिहुआन जो गमछा है इनको इसका बिहुआन बोल के बोलते हैं गमछा सबको देते हैं और छोटे बड़ों को सम्मान करते हैं आदर करते हैं The festivities of Vihu are not just restricted to the countryside or the people associated with the agricultural sector only. A similar sense of fervor and merrymaking is witnessed in urban populace too. Mark Vihu, which is in existence since time immemorial, is essentially the soul of the Assamese festivals and has always brought the people together. With that, we've come to the end of this episode of Roving Report. Do connect with us through our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter at NAIndia underscore ANI. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to get latest news updates from the Northeast. I am your host, Valerie Patton. Goodbye and take care.